calculate the currents flowing in ammeters A1 and A2, here and here, and calculate the resistance of the lamp down here. Now this circuit might look a bit intimidating to start with, but there are two really useful laws that we can use as part of our toolkit for analyzing circuits. First of all, just note that we have a parallel circuit situation. That's two series circuits joined to the same power supply, each with their own private loop. So that's a, a parallel circuit. OK. Let's first of all take a look at the first rule you can use to analyze circuits. So rule one. We can say that the the sum of voltages across the components in any series loop equals the sum of the supply voltages. What this is saying is that the voltages or potential differences dropped across these resistors, which are the components in our first circuit. Remember, the ammeters don't play a part because they shouldn't have any resistance. Uh, the voltmeter doesn't play a part because current doesn't flow into the voltmeter. What it shouldn't do. So the sum of voltages across the resistors or the components in this circuit must equal the total sum of the supply voltage. In this case, that's 12 volts. So immediately we can start to analyze this circuit. We have a loop here. This is our first series loop. So using this first rule, we can see that the potential difference dropped across this resistor must be 12 minus 3, which is 9 volts. Brilliant. What about the other series loop in this parallel circuit? So that's the one that goes all the way around the outside. We can use the same rule. So let's look at the components. So we go along here, we ignore the ammeter, we go down here. Oh, here's our first component. We don't know what the potential difference dropped across that is. OK, but we keep going, keep going. Ah, here we go, another component in that particular loop, which is 3 volts again. So we know that 12 volts must equal 3 plus something. And so this again must be 9 volts dropped across this lamp. I hope you can see how powerful this rule is. This is called Kirchhoff's first law. Very useful for analyzing complicated circuits. OK, so what about the second rule? So rule two says that the sum of currents into a junction equals the sum of currents out. It's kind of common sense, really. If we have a current coming in down here, we could call that I2, then it splits up into two other currents, one which would be I1, and the other, perhaps we could call it I3, going down here. And I2 must equal I1 plus I3. Otherwise, you've got a leak somewhere and you're losing current. We're going to use that in just a moment. But we need to, first of all, use some of the information that we've uh, worked out already using the equation V equals IR. So using both these rules and V equals IR is a very powerful way to analyze circuits. Let's take a look at this situation here with this resistor. And, and it's quite useful to draw a potato around the component that you're interested in when you're analyzing it. 
So here we have a potential difference of 9 volts. So we can say that V equals 9 volts. We have a resistance of the resistor, which is 20 ohms. And we can find out, using V equals IR, the current in amps. So let's put the numbers in using V equals IR. 9 equals I, and that would be I1. We could say I1, multiplied by 20. So therefore, I1 is equal to 9 divided by 20, which equals 0 0.45 amps. We have worked out I1. Brilliant. So that's 0 0.45 five amps. Okay, can we use V equals IR anywhere else in this circuit? Yeah, we could use it down here. So let's draw a potato around the component. We know that 1.8 amps is flowing through it. So we can go, well, V is 9 volts. Uh, we know I is 1.8 amps. We know the resistance. Well, no, we don't. We're trying to find the resistance. That's in ohms. Again, let's use V equals IR. So we'd go 9 equals 1.8 multiplied by R. So divide both sides by 1.8. R equals 9 divided by 1.8, which equals 5 ohms. Fabulous. We've now worked out the resistance of this bulb which was the second part of the question. We still have one part to answer, though. We've answered um, ammeter A1 value, and we've answered the resistance of the bulb. We've still got to find the uh, current flowing through A2. And this is where we can use rule 2, the sum of currents into a junction equals the sum of currents out of the junction. So we can write that I2 must equal I1 plus I3. And we know what I1 and I3 are, so we can put the numbers in now. 0 0.45 plus 1.8, and we get 2.25 amps. And that is the value of the current flowing through ammeter A2, 2.25 amps. Great, so I hope you found that useful. Try using these two rules, these two laws from Mr. Kirchhoff, together with V equals IR, to analyze any circuits, whether they're series or parallel. And remember that this first rule applies to any series loop. So you've got to define a series loop and then ignore any other branches. Hope that helps. I'll see you in the next flashcard.